It's no longer news that Otaidi Roku Road is to be expanded into a six-lane road and a flyover bridge will be constructed at Ojure to replace the roundabout. Apparently, some structures will have to give way for this development to take place. So today, I have decided to bring to you exclusive coverage of the activities on that road. Are the people happy with this new development? Will those whose properties are demolished be compensated? These are some of the questions that will be answered. So sit back and let's do this. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. Just type Novent TV, N O V E N T space TV. Click on the subscribe button and click on the notification button. And you can always be alerted anytime we upload meaningful content like the one you're about to watch. My name is Ashiwaji. If you are ready, I am. No doubt, Ojuri traffic is a nightmare to anyone flying that road daily. What has been lost as a result of the traffic jam on that road can't be quantified. I'm aware lives have been lost because of the inability to get to the hospital early enough. It is always believed that if you can drive around Ojuri for two consecutive weeks without having a scratch on your car, you should be awarded the best driver of the year, honestly. If you don't eat a car, a keke will scratch you. While avoiding an Okada man, a pedestrian may slam your boot for driving slowly. It's a crazy world out there. Several attempts have been made by successive governments to address the traffic jam at Ujuri. Both federal, state, and even local government. As a matter of fact, KBC or Lotta of Water has on countless times acted as a traffic warden, let alone the council chairman, Engineer Sharif Aduwale Musa. Personally, I've been part of several groups and committees set up to address the situation. And interestingly, I've also been part of those that staged protests for the road to be fixed. It is however important to note that the consensus has been that Ojuri deserves a flyover bridge and of course motor parks. I hope you are aware that you can practically find a bus to anywhere you are going to in Lagos from Ojuri. So when I said it's the most popular spot in Ota after Songu, I was right. Our hopes were raised when it was said by the government that Mike Hadinunga of Globacom may likely take up the reconstruction of the road on a tax relief arrangement with the federal government. But our hope was quickly dashed when we also found out that Glo said the cost of reconstruction was too much for him to handle. Also, a flyover bridge at Ojure was not part of the project scope. Hmm. Who will now come to our head? That's the question on our lips. Then, what about winners? Someone once asked, Winaske, Chayi Was winners created to act as Ministry of Road Infrastructure for us in Otani? I bet, maybe I leave Baba Yidebo. You don't try for us. Well, that's the kind of conversation that ensued when the matter was raised somewhere I was. Today, respite is here at last. Our prayers have been answered. Or should I say our requests have been granted? No, Joe. We believe so much in prayers in this part of the world. So, what we are seeing today is not a product of the protest led by the Fix Otta Road Movement. Nor is it um, a product of the several letters and engagements eminent personalities, including a lot of what are held with the powers that be in government. It is our prayer, even though we are sinners, the grace of God is there for us. Anyway, back to the main gist. A 24-hour notice was handed to occupants of structures on the Otai Diroko Road, right from the Songo Kiteri side to Aton Ota. The question is, is it right for the government to send these people away? This is the answer. You may not be able to read what is on the screen, but let me help you read it loud. Open State Urban and Regional Planning and Development Law Number 61 of 2022 Ogun State Planning and Development Permit Regulations 2022 Notice of Contravention Upon inspection of the property or development at within address, it appears that the provisions of the Urban and Regional Planning and Development Law No. 61 of 2022 and the enabling regulations of the state have been contravened in respect thereof. 
you can see that it's a matter of law. <laughs> Your contravention consists of the following. Construction without a statutory development permit. Hmm. Okay. If you dispute the above contravention, you are requested to bring all documents in support of your case, including your planning permit, to the undersigned within 24 hours of the service of this notice on you or your property. Are you following? All right. Still on that same page. If you do not dispute the contravention, now listen to this. You are ordered to restore the land to its original state by removing the said contravention. If you fail to remove the said contravention within 24 hours from the date of the service of this notice, the said contravention shall be demolished. Hmm. That notice was dated 24th June 2024. So, has this answered your question or I should still explain? Apparently, nobody who owns structures on this portion of land has a permit to present. That's it. Definitely, they can't get any compensation from the government. I overheard someone inside Keke Marua yesterday saying, Ah, you want to of food? Government might compensate you. Hmm, Chief Estate Surveyor, Town Planner, Analyzer, inside Keke Napep. You know them now. I'm sorry to bust your bubbles, sir. No shishi for anybody. So, I asked your guys in the town planning office what we ought to do anytime we want to buy a landed property. They said to consult a registered surveyor to chart the land and confirm from the Bureau of Lands if the land is okay to buy. So, why did you think the banks on that road were not affected? Look at UBA. Look at Zenith Bank. Look at the old Echo Bank. All of them were not actually affected because they followed due process. Even the Gomode Grammar School had only a fraction of its frontage affected. And that's the stru- structures that were built without consulting relevant government agencies, I guess. So next time you want to develop a landed property, get the government's relevant supporting document. If Preventure after securing C of O and the government still decides that for the greater good of the people, they need your space, you'll be duly compensated. I empathize with property owners on that road. In fact, I spoke with a few of them and they showed courage. I'm proud of them. One of them who owns a phone shop told me to help him look out for any landlord who wants to sell his land on that road. Of course, his kind of business can't be hidden in the streets. It has to be by the roadside. But indeed, for the greater good of all, Bojure deserves sanity and it can only be gotten through this means. We will have to deal with the government. So, according to Engineer Tunji Akiyosi, the Honorable Representing Adudota Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives, he said and I quote, We acknowledge that this expansion will bring temporary discomfort to our community. However, this is a necessary sacrifice for the long-term benefits that this project will bring. So, he noted that when the expansion is completed, it will significantly improve transportation and stimulate economic growth within the federal constituency. Of course, he's right. So, I also asked another elder statesman, town planner Wade Kadiri, a two-time rector of the Moshuda Bela Polytechnic, and of course, a notable figure in the town planning world. This is what he has to say. He said the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now, according to a Chinese proverb. Improvement and development are never too late. However, we should all be ready to bear the brunt and cost. One generation suffers for other generations to enjoy. It takes one man to plant and nurture a tree and for another to enjoy the shade. However, it takes more than the road to have a good journey. Listen to him. He said there is a human side to it. The behaviors of the drivers, the passengers, the pedestrians, the agberos, and the street traders, including the elepas. <laughs> if you know where that is coming from. <laughs> so, the state of the vehicles also matters. No matter how good a road is, a broken down articulated lorry trailer will reduce its capacity. There will definitely be a slower movement of traffic and therefore traffic build up. I now asked him, I said, sir, for this way that they are constructing, you have said we should bear with government and all that. 
do you do those who think there should be alternative routes he has this to say there must be alternative routes except the construction work will take place at night during the low traffic period but then how about the security and safety of the workers Ilobo road could have been a perfect alternative but the road is perpetually under construction <laughs> Abakadiri. All right, if other said a link between Italy and Ojalta could be another one. Bibio via Fadino and Ope Road is also a possible alternative. Mm. According to David Olushesi, a businessman in the neighborhood, he said, and I quote, I think the structures marked should be completely brought down and reconstructed. Of course, not beyond the marked area, instead of leaving the undemolished parts standing. I'm sure you can't break a part of the story building and expect that the remaining will still meet building standards. Definitely, the integrity of such a building would have been compromised, and in no time, it may come down naturally. So the owners of this building should rebuild their structures instead of leaving the unaffected parts standing. Hmm. That's another valid point from David Olushesi. Because if you look at this video, see this particular building now. This is where the mark. This is where the government marked, so they have decided to demolish this frontage. Probably with the hope of re having the remaining part still standing. But Olushesi David is saying that the integrity of that building would have been compromised. So it is better to just pull down everything and rebuild from the scratch. If you agree with me, let me know in the comment section. So, in summary, the expansion of Otaidi Roko Road is long overdue and the construction of a flyover bridge at Ujure is necessary. Also, if you plan to erect any structure, ensure you get the permit of relevant government agencies. And lastly, the people demand to know the scope of work, the contractor or contractors in charge, the people deserve to know duration of work and available alternative routes. Once again, if you are yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do and turn on the notification button and also watch out for our next video on prices of frozen foods and other food items